Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Mommy Budgets and I am Amanda. Today, as you can see from the description below, I am here to talk about my, my 2022 goals. So, actually, as it relates to my 2022 goals, they are going to look very similar to my 2021 goals with a couple of additions, okay? So, if you are new to my channel, welcome! And if you are not new, welcome back. Here on this channel, we talk about anything related to finances and budgeting and investing and getting to financial freedom. So, Let's dive right into what I plan on doing for 2022 as it relates to goals I want to accomplish. I am going to put a sheet up on your screen so that you can follow along with me and we can dive right into the 2022 goals. Can you believe it? It is 2022. Wow. We are here. I don't know if I want to say 2021 went by quickly. Did it go by slowly? I think, you know what, honestly, for me, for 2021, there were spurts and, and periods during the year where I was like, oh, I hurry. I want this year to hurry up and be over with. And then there were other you know, parts in the year where I was like, man, I just want this time or this experience to last you know forever because you know you can be in those moments where you're having fun you're enjoying life and people and family in different situations and you're like yes i just want this to last forever then there are other parts of you like oh i'm so over this i am so over this and want it done so basically i'm not sure you know if it was really a year that went by quickly for me so, and I, I just wanted to make that point because a lot of people, you know, when they're doing their um, recap, it's like, oh man, that year flew by, you know. But yeah, for me, there were <laughs> certain times of year where I wanted to just want the time to kind of stop. And then there were times that I just wanted time to fly by. So yeah. All right, let's dive right into these 2022 goals. You know what, guys? I was kind of thinking through these these goals. And um, yeah, you know, to be honest, I wanted to be able to write out some goals that I really wanted to try and achieve. But at the same time, I wanted to challenge myself because there's nothing like a good old challenge <laughs> of yourself, you know, when when you know you can meet that goal or, you know, you got the finances to take care of X, Y, Z, then it's not, I guess it is a goal, but, um, you know, challenging yourself to try and go above and beyond what you know you can do. That's kind of well worth it for me. So, and that's what I tried to do here on this sheet um, this year. So let's dive right in. The first one is to pay $35,000 toward my mortgage. On last year, the goal was to pay $30,000 and I did reach that goal. So I am going to bump it up five more thousand. Whoo, yes, yeah, so we, we're going to try that um, because I didn't even think I would get to 30000 last year. But yeah, so that's where we are here. Th pay 35000 toward the mortgage. Number two, Grow my side hustles or my in-home businesses. Yeah, this has been a thing that I've been thinking about a lot toward the end of the year. I haven't been making a whole lot of strides on my side hustles. And honestly, yeah, you know, I can say that it was due to the situation we're in because a lot of the items that I do produce in my business, my side business, are apparel based so you know it's um t-shirts or um anything where you can put a vinyl design on um that is kind of what i do um 
or vinyl transfer. That's what I do in my side business. Um, so I can say it was due to the time we were in, you know, well, you know, people were still at home and they weren't going many places. So they didn't need to buy different apparels, you know, whatever, you know, but also I know that I'm going to look at that as an excuse because I also know that I could have pushed harder. I could have made more effort to do more with this business. Yes. Am I busy enough? Yes, I am. But this is a business where I enjoy making these products, producing um, these items. This is that crafty side of me that I inherited directly from my mother. She was a seamstress. She made anything from draperies in your home all the way to wedding dresses and wedding, you know, bridesmaid party dresses. She did it all. But yeah, that's kind of where that comes from. I like to be creative in that space. So yeah, I am going to, this is definitely going to probably be a challenge. So I'm going to have to push myself to get out, you know, make more flyers, contact more businesses. I do have a few contracts with the school system where I do apparel for them, but um, I need to get out and do a little bit more with that. So um, that's, that's the second one. The first one is teaching. I am really kind of up on the fence. I know I do have a couple of ladies that follow me that are, have been working on their PhD and they've asked me questions about, you know, teaching online and how do they get into it and what they need to do and that kind of thing. And if you are interested in that, you can leave me a comment below or send me a message to the email address below. And I will be more than willing to give you some pointers on what you need to do to teach online. And especially at the uh, doctoral level, I will do that. But as for me, I'm not sure if I still want to do it from the perspective that I am doing it. I'm actually a um, doctoral studies mentor. And basically there are about seven courses that I teach and a student can be in that space or in any one of those courses at any given time. So if I have about four or five students that are currently in class, if you want to call it per semester. You may have one student that's working on chapter one of their dissertation all the way to a student that is about to give their oral defense on their dissertation. So it could be at any level. But um, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is about the atmosphere right now. And I'm going to have to honestly sit down and, and you know, kind of think through what it is that is not gratifying or satisfying for me right now. I don't know if it's because for the last, I've been doing this since 2010. So it's 2022. So that's 12 years. I don't know if reading 300 page papers <laughs> have drained me. I don't know, but I, I need to see if I want to continue doing this. And if so, if I want to take a different approach with it or what I want to do. So that's that. So that's also going to be a challenge. So, and the rental property, I mean, I just put that down here because that is my other side hustle where I do have a rental property that's paid off. Um, so I don't know if there's really anything I can do because I have a tenant in there and the rent is being paid and there is minimum repairs, you know, needed at this moment on the property. So I don't really know if there's anything that I can do to um, as a goal as it relates to that rental property this year. But I just put it on here because I like writing out all of my things, items, whatever you know I have going on in my life. And it's also just to kind of keep it in the forefront of your mind when you are... Um, dealing with goals, you know, you just, cause you never know something may, may pop up into my head about rental properties, you know, or there may be a property that comes on the market that's five or $10,000 that I can kind of grab up, you know? So it's just things like that, but nothing really glaring at me right now about the rental property that I need to do, you know, outside of what's going on right now. All right. Number three, at least four workouts per week. Self-explanatory. That's what we're going to do. We've been doing that for a while now, probably the last seven or eight years. So 
That should be doable. Number four, 30 minutes of daily activity. This is another goal that I had from last year where you're just kind of up moving around, doing your thing for at least 30 minutes every single day. Number five, save $15,000 in cash or investments or, or whatever avenue that I can save money in, my health savings account plan, whatever it is. Um, save 15000 last year, I said 10000 So as we can see, based on number one and five, I have added ten more thousand dollars to my goals for this upcoming year. So yeah, we're going to see what we can do. All right, number six, be mindful, aware, and in the moment. You know, you want to be able to stop, take a breather, not just stay on autopilot, continue to be in the rat race where you're going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and not be in the moment. And that means me being aware of myself, doing some self-care, you know, listening and understanding others and not just kind of hearing them talk and waiting to make your statement without even, you know, processing what they're saying, you know, so just in the moment, um, all the way around as it relates to life, myself and other people. So that's that. And last but not least is to give at least $1,000 to charity. I give to charity regularly. I probably give one or two donations per month. But I've never tracked it, so I, I am going to track it this year to kind of see if I can meet this goal or do I meet this goal of $1,000 in the year of 2022. But that is all of my 2022 goals, guys. So let me know in the comments below what you plan on doing for 2022. Have you even thought about it? I'm telling you, it is really really beneficial when you write out your goals so you can know what you're working toward. So please subscribe to my channel. Also like this video if you like it. But this is all that I have for this video. This is Dr. Mommy Budgets where we dream big but start small around here. I will see you in the next video. Peace.